Over the past about 10 years or so, there's been a revolution in our ability to read DNA from ancient fossils. And this has revealed some amazing things about recent ev human evolutionary history. And one of the most striking is that humans, our ancestors, interbred with Neanderthals. This is about 50,000 years ago that this happened. And there's still a remnant of that interbreeding in the genomes of many modern humans living today. Really unique opportunity here at, at Vanderbilt to study this question because Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt has a database called BioView and it's, it's a large um, database of electronic medical records from patients in the hospital that have been anonymized so all the identifying information has been removed. We used a, a, a large database of about 28,000 people um, for which we could have genetic information. So we could look at their DNA derived from their blood samples and predict where each person had Neanderthal DNA. We found that um, Neanderthal DNA indeed does influence many traits in modern humans. And it's a diverse array of traits. So traits involved in the immune system, traits involved in our skin, but also traits, psychiatric traits and neurological traits. We found that Neanderthal variants um, influence your risk for a, a skin disease called actinic keratosis. These little scaly lesions you get on your skin as you're um, aging and getting lots and lots of sun exposure. And it's very possible that whatever that, you know, whatever those variants were doing back then may actually have been productive. But now, in current levels of sun exposure, in current environments, it's not, not good for us. So, I mean, another uh, immune related phenotype that we found a very, very strong association with was something called hypercoagulability. So that sounds complicated, but it just means your blood clots more quickly. And that's another example of something that could be bad in, in modern environments. You know, it can lead to all sorts of things like strokes and embolisms. It's possible that this, this hypercoagulation um, was good for us back then in, in healing wounds and fighting off uh, fighting off pathogens, and now, it's, when that's not such a problem for us, it's bad to have thicker blood in many cases. A couple of the really unexpected associations we found were with um, what I'll broadly call some psychiatric traits. So for example, we found that if we looked at Neanderthal variants overall in an individual, we could better predict their risk for depression. And now I want to be clear, that's not that Neanderthals are just making us depressed. It's some, some Neanderthal DNA increases your risk and other bits of Neanderthal DNA in other parts of your genome decreases your risk. We're now working towards understanding sort of at the, the low molecular level how these bits of Neanderthal DNA are influencing these associations with, with, with diseases we've found. And, and so one of the um, I'll just say that, that uh, in doing that, um, we may better understand the basis for these diseases, the genetic basis for these diseases, and, and understanding the evolution, you know, where these bits of DNA that cause disease came from may help us understand how to better avoid them.